See, I see gold showing up already on top of the black sand. So that's why I know we have to be careful because the heavy stuff, the bigger gold will be at the bottom. But I'm seeing it, there's a big nut, or. I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm Greg Ovens. And this is the 30 Day Survival Challenge, Canadian Rockies. There's only one rule. If you want to eat, you got to catch and cook it. The 30 Day Survival Challenge Season 2 Canadian Rockies has been brought to you in part by Dr. Squatch Soap, Hidden Woodsman Gear, Go Prepared Survival, Outdoor Vitals, Wazoo Survival Gear, Simple Shot Shooting Sports, and Grim Workshop. Check out the link in the description below for the gear video of the 30 Day Survival Challenge. Oh, good morning. Good morning, morning, morning. It is day eight, and uh, we're gonna pack up camp and head to one last place before our final destination. Yeah, try our hand at some gold panning. See if we can't get rich. <laughs> gold panning in the Rocky Mountains. This ought to be fun. I've I've tried it before when I was a kid in Vermont in a river that had some little flakes and stuff. But uh, gold, uh, Greg's been fairly successful at uh, panning up a little bit here and there over the years. So this should be pretty interesting. I'm excited for this. Good morning. On our fire. Just an easy way to do it, eh? You want to do the fire and coffee, and I'll uh, break down our hammocks for our, our heading out. Sure. All right. We got a plan. See, check out how he does this. So this is, I did this a lot in Patagonia too. You got if it's a feathery looking um, piece of wood, you can spark onto it really easily. The feathery effect like you see here and this finer charcoal effect which will take a spark really well and you can use to light a denser coal like this here which does not light from a quick single spark very easily is caused by rotten wood that you're burning in the fire and when it goes out because it doesn't have enough other buddies close to it it leaves this feathery or finer charcoal yeah just one spark gets it going yeah but then he mates two pieces of wood together and blows between them. And that's something I've never done. I usually put little twigs and stuff on top and blow on it. This goes so much quicker. S something I've always said in my videos, fire likes buddies. Fire likes buddies. Well, the, yeah. You know, you put... The coal wants the flame and the flame wants the coal. And coals are so easy to get going. Yeah. And you put like one stick on, on a fire and it doesn't go very far and it goes out, but you put a bunch on. That's why you see me, whenever I build my fires, I get it going, a little pile of sticks, and then I just dump all the other sticks on top. Because if you have them ready and the right size from the next size to the next size to the next size, boom, you got your fire. Even in wet conditions, it'll be like right up through the whole thing because it wicks from one piece to the next. It likes fire, likes buddies. Let's take down those hammocks so we can get out of here and do some gold pan.
toasting up our fish so we can bring them with us. I'm gonna have them on the road so we can get the heck out of here. Coffee's done. I'm just finishing up some packing up. Have our coffee and uh, hit the road, get on to the next spot. Oh, I like coffee. That was a hard day yesterday. I'm still, I'm knackered. I like low on calories. I just feel like even taking those hammocks down felt like it winded me. So just need to catch up on rest for a whole day. Um, this gold panning thing will be a lot less vigorous and we should be able to catch some. We should get some fish up in there too. Fish up there too? Yeah, cutthroat. That's the name of the game for this survival challenge. Fish for the win. That's what it seems like. Fish and gophers. Yeehaw. Well, we don't have much else. No. So, you know. Well, we get the marmot once we get if to we, the right yeah, spot. I think we will have marmots. Aww. I mean, something wasn't fat on it. Although that gopher that you had the other day was really it fatty. Did have a lot of fat on it. Mm -hmm. It did. All right, let's pack it in and head on to gold gold mining. Gold panning. panning, gold panning. It sounds fun. It sounds more fun. We're going mining for gold. There's gold in them hills. I like you so much, I'm going to make you my partner. All you have to do is find the gold and I'll share it with you. There we go. A little food for the road. Good enough. We got fish and gold. And this is where that black sand is that you yep. find gold in. Exactly. Well, less talking, more panning. We're not gonna get rich if we just stand here, right? We're not gonna get rich on the gold we pan either. Oh, we're but not. It's something to do. But we, but we might. Don't, don't if, if you tell them that, them... then they won't want to watch anymore. <laughs> We might find the mother load, you never I, know. I, I just want enough to replace my, my tooth when it when it uh, I lose a tooth like eating a woodchuck or something, you know? Like I can put a, my own I panned for that gold tooth myself. <laughs> Alright, well let's get the pans and the tools out. Yep. A good thing around here would be good. Like if you can get the bedrock out, like this one, like see, that's moving. Okay, so you get rid of this big stuff, but then wash this in the pan because it'll stick to that, right? Okay. When we get to this stage, we can pretty much check. And we just wash it like this. Nice and slow. And there's our black sand at the top. So if there's any gold, it's going to be up there. This is just the first pan, though. You don't see nothing there that time. But that's just a little bit of gravel. All right. All right, let's just skip ahead, see if we can find a better camera angle. There we go, that seems a bit safer. 
It might surprise you to learn that despite Greg's super insightful and extremely in-depth explanation of how to find gold, I didn't really have a clue as to what I was doing. And I'm asking myself now as I sit here and watch this, do you really even care? And how much can I make people watch me splash a bunch of rocks around with some water in hopes of finding some little flakes of gold? I don't know why Greg loves this so much. And at the time when he told me about it, it sounded so good. My delusions of grandeur kicked in and I thought for sure I'd be the one that finds the nugget that was worth, oh, I don't know, 10 grand in the first shovel load. And before I even finished cleaning that first pan of gravel, a feeling of work settled on to me. I didn't like this. But despite my aversion to doing things that actually feel like work, a realization came to me that I have two little girls at home that would love nothing more than two little vials of gold that their daddy mined out of the rocks deep in the Rocky Mountains of Canada. So I pushed on. Till this edge is up here. Yep. You know your gold's at the bottom. Put the water in and just kind of lift it out. Oh, okay. Gently. So you got quite a few little flakes or colors, I would call them. There it is. There's my treasure. One little flake. Greg says it's not too promising here, so we're gonna go uh, the other side. Yeah, go down on the other side. Down on the other side and see if we can't do better there with bigger flakes. I'm gonna need a lot more for my gold tooth. <laughs> All I hear, go get the money, so I go get it. Early bird, go get the worm, worm in the dirt. I can show you what I'm worth, my hands in the dirt. much quicker at it than me. He's already done like several shovel flows. I gotta like watch what he's doing. That felt good. Wash my face in the river though. I feel so sweaty and just ugh. I think tomorrow morning I'm jumping in. I don't I don't care how cold it is. I'm gonna jump in and have a... Sh yeah. Not over there where it was like where we were first started. Yeah, it's like it's a little pool. I know how to swim in a big heavy river. I'm not gonna swim in the river though. I'm, I'm just gonna jump in the little eddy, you know? Even if it's only a foot deep, I'll lie down in there and just let the water run over me. It's cold as heck, but it's not not um, mountain cold like the last river that was flowing out of the glacier. That was cold, that was cold. You know, made your teeth hurt just drinking it. No, it wasn't that bad, it was actually really refreshing. Man, the taste of the water coming down that waterfall, oh. It's, it's magical all in its own right. I'm kind of hungry though. I'm, I'm thinking more about food than I am about panning. Can't eat gold. It's like an art form. I watch him doing it and he's like, he ships it, sloshes it around with a whole bunch of water in there. And then all that dark sand goes to the bottom, it's all the light sand on top, and then he sloshes it again, and all that light sand goes away. And the black, what's the black sand? Well, it's magnetite, but 
it's magnetic that's how you get rid of it when you're trying to get your gold out you take a magnet over it and get rid of it see I see gold showing up already on top of the black sand so that's why I know we have to be careful because the heavy stuff the bigger gold will be at the bottom but I'm seeing it there's a big nut or that's not gold <laughs> it's just an orange rock but I'm gonna get this to where they can see what's in here there's a bigger one hundreds of little guys there's another big one showing up see even it floated away that's why you got to be careful hundreds of little ones. lots of little flakes and lots of work huh it's hard on the back yeah it's hard on the stomach well we'll get we'll get some more tomorrow i'm hungry we'll have some energy to really get at it again tomorrow yeah tomorrow we'll get we'll dig a bit more we're gonna dig a bit more and we'll do some more gold panning and then we'll head on to our final location and a fishing stop and yeah. start building our tree forts i'm in let's do some dinner though we're both still kind of struggling from our hike yesterday it was it was just like i can see it in my face i look in the camera it's like we just Really tuggered ourselves out and stranding ourselves like that. Need some time to recover. I think I'm gonna set these hammocks up the easy way today. I'll just uh, use a little bit of uh, some of this. There we go, that's easier. That looks ominous. It's starting to, starting to rain a little. I think we've had enough of that. You can stop anytime you want. It's rained almost a little bit every day. The only day it didn't rain hard, or a little bit hard for a little while, was when we were on top of the mountain, thank God. Seriously, thank you, God. Whew. Darn rain is killing us. It took me a little while to get Greg's hammock set up. I had to put two more ties on back to other trees, because these little trees were bending. That's all we really had good in the area. I managed to find two for myself and then had to repair his longer. Got myself a cup of the uh, gopher fish ever stew. And I'm off to bed. We gotta get more food, secure more food, otherwise this is just gonna be a really boring, uh, kinda like an episode of Naked and Afraid. Everybody laying around and trying to conserve their calories and being exhausted. And we got lots of plans for other adventures. Like building our shelters up in the trees, and so I think once we get another night's rest, we'll be recovered from that night up over the hill, up on that waterfall and those glacial lakes was so beautiful. But man, it it was further than we thought. Seven miles up in there, it really took the stink out of us. Both of us are just wiped. You know, part of the problem is too, is we went to some of these locations to harvest fish, and we harvested. Or Greg harvested his limit of fish, or um, or even I did at the little lake, and it's just they they're not enough, you know. Legally harvesting more, illegally harvesting more would would have kept us going, you know. Illegally harvesting uh, as we're traveling rabbits and things that we've seen that aren't in season, um, you know, it makes it harder, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, hunting season and some big game, securing some big game during this, you know, would make a huge difference. But that's not something that we can do. So it's all part of the challenge and part of the fun. Is uh, this is the 30 day survival challenge, Canadian Rockies. So I'm gonna go to bed. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Fowler out.